Hi Web fans, so today we're looking at my five year review of owning the Weber Baby Q. So what we'll do is dive straight into it. Don't forget if you use the video today, there are links in the description below for the best place to get your Weber products. Make sure you check those out at the end of this video. Hi Weber fans, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at Weber Q and my five year review. Now I bought my Weber Q around five years ago and it's been a great investment. Now there are a few things I like and a few things I dislike. So let's dive in and have a look. Now when I first bought my Q, I went for the Q1200. The reason being because there are two versions of the Baby Q, the Medium Q and the Family Q. And with the Q1000, you've got the lower lid, you've got no thermometer, and you've got a piezo ignition. Now for an extra $10 if you're in Australia or an extra $20 if you're in the US, then you get the electron ignition and the higher lid. So, so that's the benefit of buying the Q1200. It's the same across the board for the Weber Q, which is the Q2000 and the Q2200 and the Family Q, which is the Q3000 and the Q3200. Now the benefit with the Q1200 and the Q2200 is the portability. So if you like going camping or tailgating, it's fantastic. If you've got a caravan and you need the lower lid purely so it will go in the side of your caravan, then you go for the Q1000, but you, but you are for going the higher lid and the electronic ignition. Things I love about the Baby Q is what we did a couple of years back is they brought it out with split plates, so you can fit a flat plate if you want, I find it a lot easier to use the QR pan for cleaning and just for portability and taking that food out. The other thing I like about the Baby Q is the variety of food you can cook on it. So whether you're cooking sausages, doing a sausage sizzle, you can go straight to cooking those steaks. You can even convert it to doing a beautiful roast with a convection cooking system or even do pizzas for the kids and use it as a pizza oven. Now over the five years I've done a lot of cooks on this Weber Q and I've had a few issues which I will be sharing. And a couple of months ago I did a video on how to respray your lid on your Baby Q. This wasn't purely for aesthetics so it wasn't just because they've got different colours in the US and the UK. It was well as that there's a few issues I have. So first up we'll look at the lid. After five years, now I've had this resprayed around three months and it started to come back again. So what you notice on the lid is you'll get a little bit of smoke staining and this will gradually work its way up that lid. Now no matter how much you scrub that lid, you're gonna get that smoke stain. So over time, you either need to buy a new lid or you need to respray your lid. The other issue I have as well is on the back, as we lift the lid, you can see we get a lot of grease along that back lid line. And what happens if you don't clean it after every use, it will start to drip out the back. And as you can see at my pavers, if you haven't got a mat down, it's gonna stain your floor wherever you keep it. So my advice with that is either put a board down or put a mat just to cure that problem. And I will put a link in the description below to a company called Kayon and they have done a drip attachment for the back of the queue. I haven't done a review on this yet, but I will be doing one in the near future. Now the next issue I've had with the Q over the past five years is the side tables. Now I bought these side tables as an extra. They do come with it if you're in the UK and they do come with the high lid model if you're in the US. If you're in Australia, it's an optional extra. Now there are these tables and I do find that they get a lot of grease along that one edge as you can see from me wiping it with this paper towel. So over time it gets really gungy so you've got to keep that clean every week. Now with the Q as well, it's really easy to clean. Weber recommend that you clean it every three to five cooks. I try and clean it every cook purely to stop this grease and keep it down to a minimum. You can buy a plastic spatula attachment that you can scrape all that residue down into the bowl and straight into the drip tape down the bottom. But over time you're going to need to clean it and I will put all kind of above a link into a video that I did on how to clean your Q and the best way to clean your baby Q. The best things I found with the Q was the fact that you get a five year warranty. Now everything is covered for five years, the electronic ignition is covered for the lifetime of that barbecue. So if your electronic ignition packs up, Weber will replace that under warranty. Also upgrade your piezo ignition to electronic ignition and you can also buy lids from Weber if you want the high lid version if you've bought a small one by mistake. The only issue that I've had with the Q is it's quite susceptible to wind, so you've got to make sure which way the wind's blowing. Sometimes that burner will blow out on the baby Q, and you'll go out and the gas is still running. Now, Weber are addressing this issue and they're going to fit a safety device, so if the gas goes out, it will shut off. I think it will be a major improvement in the future, and you're not going to waste gas, and you're not going to have the risk of going out there and reigniting it 
and forgetting that there's all that gas in the queue. One other issue I've had with your grill plates, if you live near the ocean, they are susceptible to getting rust. So depending how much you cook on that cube, if there's a lot of grease and oil on there, it shouldn't rust, but there have been a few issues with those grill plates rusting. But Webber will replace those under warranty, so make sure if you've got a queue and yours are starting to rust, if it's under that five year warranty, make sure you claim your replacement grill plates. Now don't forget everything you use in the video today, there are links in the description below for the best place to get your Webber products, make sure you check those out at the end of this video. Now I hope you enjoyed that quick review and I thought it was only fair to show the things I like and the things I dislike. For those of you looking at buying a Weber Baby Q, I will put an eye card above a link in to an unboxing and an assembly of the Baby Q. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you check that out if you're interested in buying a Weber Q. If you're looking at four accessories for your Q, I'll put a link to a video I did a couple of months back, so check this one out next.